Good morning and welcome to worship from Trinity United Church in Winnipeg for Sunday, May the 2nd, 2021. We are celebrating communion today, so if you'd like to stop this and then go and get uh, a candle, a piece of bread, a cracker, a bun, a cookie, whatever you have on hand, and something to drink, some grape juice, orange juice, apple juice, some water, uh, to join with us in communion today. So as we begin, we light this candle near and far. Although I am lighting it in this building. I know folks are lighting it all over the world. Whether you are joining us and see the light from your tablet or device, computer or cell phone, whether you are listening on the telephone, whether you are here in Winnipeg or Canada or around the world in another country, we welcome you to this place. Our table is open. Our invitation says that if you seek to follow Jesus, if you are trying to be one of God's people in the world, if you are looking for that spirit to guide and inspire you, then we are all welcome at this table. It doesn't matter who we are, how much money we have, what kind of clothes we wear, what kind of place that we live in, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who we love, who is important in our lives, who we claim as family. This table is open to all. So we begin our worship by calling ourselves together with more voices 122. So we search for your message of hope, peace, joy, love, and compassion, and justice in our worship today. And as we hear the stories of our ancestors, as we relate them to what we live through, we know that your spirit will be with us. It will guide and encourage us, and your message of hope will come through. Amen. So I invite you to follow along either with the words on the screen and you can repeat the yellow ones that are, the words that are colored in yellow at home um, as I say them here and join with us in communion. This table is open to all of us and so we are able to say God is with us. and also with 
with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to God. Let's thank and praise God. It's good to give God thanks and praise. It's good to know that you are with us, Holy One, as we move our way through times that are difficult and different. We know our ancestors relied on your spirit to guide them, to inspire them, to comfort them and encourage them. As we hear their stories, we are reminded that they too faced uncertain times, that they too had to figure out how to minister to others without Jesus with them, and that they too often felt discouraged and alone. We listen to one of those stories today. Scripture is our song for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. I'm reading from the New International Version, the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is a passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. May God bless to our understanding this reading from the Holy Scripture. What a brave soul Philip was to listen to your spirit and to travel a wilderness road. On this new path, he saw someone new, and again, inspired by the Spirit, courageously went to talk to him. This is a powerful message for our ministry as well, and invites us to consider who might we, who might be wondering about you? What's what the Spirit might be calling us to do and say, and how might we approach or be approached by people in our community. We are encouraged to share our gifts of time and talent and skill and energy to enable this church to be led by the Spirit in its mission and ministry. 
The gifts that have been offered to Trinity, so many big and small gifts, lots of organization and moving things, little gifts of bunches of bananas or a bag of apples, a box of granola bars, lots of energy and time and skills and talents, and we say thank you. We are led by that same spirit in our response to your love, hospitality, and inclusion. As we light our affirming candle each Sunday, we live out our inclusive love. As we acknowledge the land that we live on as the home of our Indigenous sisters and brothers, we walk the path of reconciliation. As we are brave to try new ways of worship, we take radical hospitality to a new place. Others from our past have sang about Jesus welcoming everyone, sharing with everyone, and we listen to their words in Voices United 606. about encouraging us to be welcoming and to love those who are outcast or shunned or different. He taught us about asking questions without fear, about looking deeply into each other's hearts, about telling your story in a way that includes and invites everyone. This stranger is wealthy enough to be riding in a chariot, educated enough to read, devout enough to study, and humble enough to know that he needs help. And he's also hospitable, inviting Philip to join him in his chariot. Would that be something that we might do today? This is a powerful story about us and the church that we call home. Philip followed in the footsteps of Jesus and was inspired by your spirit and developed a relationship that was full of your unconditional love, your radical hospitality, and the inclusion of all, no matter what situation they came from. It wouldn't surprise us if Jesus had invited this person in the chariot, this Ethiopian eunuch, to have supper with him, welcoming him into this community. Like the disciples and the early Christian church, we try to live out our faith in much the same ways. We remember stories, 
and they help to guide us. We recall how Jesus, on the night before he died, in a story that we tell often, he invited his friends to share a meal with him. We're sure that during that meal that they shared some stories, that they listened to each other, that they laughed and thought about new ways of being your people. And they likely tried hard to work through their problems and issues as they ate together. They remembered their friends and their family members who were sick or alone, those who had died. And then they prayed together. And Jesus would have reminded them of the prayer that he taught and we say together today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take and find your piece of bread or whatever you have to eat, your cup of whatever you have to drink, and join with me. After they had finished eating, Jesus picked up a piece of bread and holding it in their sight, he gave thanks to you and then he broke it. And he shared it with his friends saying, whenever you do this, remember me, this is the bread of life. And then he took a cup and he poured it He gave thanks to you. He shared it with his friends, saying, This is the cup of blessing. Whenever you do this, remember me. As we share the bread and the cup, as we gather as community of one or a few or many, as we learn more about you and the stories that we tell, Holy One, we ask you to send your spirit on these gifts to bless them and us. May we always remember and celebrate your, your love, your justice, your peace. Amen. I invite you to take your piece of bread or whatever you have to eat. Place it in your hands. Surrounded with God's light and love. And then say together, this is the bread of life. Amen. Then we take our cup of whatever it is we have to drink. We hold it in our hands. We surround it with God's light and love. And we say together, this is the cup of blessing. Amen. And we pray together for the bread and cup that nourishes us, so we are Easter people, Holy One. We are grateful. For the community that gives us courage as Easter people, Holy One, we are grateful. For your spirit that inspires us in our radical hospitality, Holy One, we are grateful. As Easter people following your way, we live out our faith in this world. Amen. We'll sing Voices United 232.
cup and the stories and the prayers. What powerful message is there for you in this passage, in this worship? What powerful message is that is in this story, in this worship for our church community? What powerful message is there for our mission and our ministry? As we discover all that there is, as we search for and find God's Spirit all around us, may we know God's love and compassion, courage and justice, radical hospitality and inclusion in all we do. May we go into the world as God's people and share this not just in our church community, but like Philip, on every road we travel. Amen.